trying so hard not to like you. But there's so much that I like. And I know that you feel the same about us. Yeah, but the timing isn't right. So let me just let go. Remember how a few episodes back I did a no buy book year? Well, that's over because I bought some books, so let's talk about them, I guess. I didn't plan on buying any books this year and I was doing great, but <laughs> I was um, going from London, uh, Heathrow to Timisoara and I have to go like London, Munich and from Munich to Timisoara and every single plane was late. It was like delayed, it, it kept being delayed and delayed and I had so little time in between that I was like, I'm not gonna catch it. And the next plane was like the next day and I was like, I'm not getting stuck in an airport without anything to read. So I was like, let me buy a book, but I couldn't just buy one because everything was like, buy one, get one half off. And like buying one didn't make sense. So I bought four and this is one that I bought in London. So I'll talk about it, so. Yeah, let me tell you all about them. I think I'll start with the book I bought in London. I didn't really consider it a book because it's more like a dictionary. It's 15 minute Mandarin Chinese, learn in just 12 weeks. Um, because I just, I want to learn Chinese and this felt like the easiest book. Well, not necessarily the easiest, just the others were a lot more complex and this is also like a pocket version so you can take it with you so this was the book i love um about this is waterstones in piccadilly but this is one of the books now let's talk about the literary books the first one is i who have never known men by jacqueline hartman and this book is translate well was translated by rob schwartz um, it also has an introduction by Sophie McIntosh, but I never read the introductions because they just spoil everything. I don't understand the reason for introductions in book if you're going to spoil all the books. So I just completely skipped over that. Um, and this is a book I've already started reading and it's just... It, it's blowing my mind. I haven't finished it yet, but it's just so good. Let me read you the back of the book because I haven't told you what it's about. Um, Deep underground, 39 women live imprisoned in a cage. Watch over by Garth. These women have no memory how they got there. No notion of time, only vague recollections of their lives before. As they burn off electric light, merges day into night and numberless years pass, a young girl, the 40th prisoner, sits alone and outcast in the corner, but soon she will show herself to be the key to the other's escape and survival in the strange world that awaits them above. And it's just, I will talk about it in my August wrap up because I will definitely finish it by then. But so far, every page just blows me away. It's written so well. It's a very short book, but it just, it, packs such an impact and it's just fully recommend. I haven't finished it. I don't know if the end is good, but so far I am loving it. So, so glad I picked this up. I wanted to read this forever. Well, all these books, I wanted to read them forever, but I'm glad I started with this one and I'm really enjoying it. The next book I got was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I do love this cover. I will remove this goddamn sticker. Do you see this? For some reason it's not focusing, but I will remove this sticker. I just, I hate stickers. <laughs> I love stickers, but I hate them on books. It's just why. 
Um, this one had one as well. I removed it very carefully and I plan on doing the same for all the books. Um, but <clears throat> that's beside the point. So this book, um, everybody knows Daisy Jones and the Six. Their sound defined an era. Their albums went on every turntable. They sold out arenas from coast to coast. Then on 12 July 1979, Daisy Jones walked barefoot on the stage at Chicago Stadium and it all came crashing down. Everyone was there. Everyone remembers it differently. Nobody knew why they split until now. Um, and this sounds so interesting. I heard so many good things about this book and now I'm really curious to read it. I'm just, and the cover is so gorgeous. Again, will the sticker will disappear, um, but it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'm so excited to read every single one of these books. Like you don't understand my excitement through the roof. Um, and then we have The Memory Police by Yoko uh, Ogawa. This was translated from Japanese by Steven Snyder. Again, the cover, how can you not love it? It's just, I love pretty books with beautiful covers. Um, this was a 2020 International Booker Prize. Well, shortlisted to the International Book Prize. Yeah, I don't think it won, but it's so beautiful. Um, this says, Hat ribbon bird rose. To the people on the island, a disappeared thing no longer has any meaning. It can be burned in the garden, thrown in the river, or handed over to the memory police. Soon enough, the island forgets it ever existed. When a young novelist discovers that her editor is in danger of being taken away by the memory police, she desperately wants to save him. For some reason, he doesn't forget, and it's becoming increasingly difficult for him to hide his memories. Who knows what will vanish next? The back is, sounds so interesting. It's, I'm so excited to read this. It's just something about Japanese authors that I love. <laughs> the way they write and I think with um, translated works as well, like it's a common thing. Not all books get translated. Like if you read in English, there's plenty of terrible authors I that sounds terrible but it's there's a lot of works that are just bad and if they're that bad they don't get translated seeing as this is from a foreign author it's it has to be at least a little bit good for it to be translated now that's not the case for all books there are some terrible books getting translated but for a lot of them that is the case and it just I don't know, it, it adds a bit to the standard of the book. It might be a terrible book, I might hate it, but I am really looking forward to this book. So this was The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. And the last book that I got is Everything I Know About um, Parties, Days, Friends, Jobs, Life, Love. So I think the actual title is like Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. Um, this is the cover. Again, it has an annoying sticker. I will remove, but there were books with two stickers. I picked the one with only one. So it will get removed. Um, and this one says, don't you just love books that only have um, reviews on the back instead of actually telling you what the book is about? Just fantastic, isn't it? Let me actually find the description. Okay, I was wrong. This apparently does not have a description of what the book is. So let me read you the review from the Metro. Steeped in furiously funny accounts of one night stands, ill-advised late night taxi journeys up to the M1, flabby, no, grubby flat shares and the beauty of female friendships as Alderton joyfully booze cruises her way through her 20s. So. From what I understand, it's the author's own experiences as she kind of tackles life, her experiences with love and just everything. I don't know, Red says, very, very funny. Don't hate me when I tell you that everything about I know about love is sex in the city for millennials because I mean it as a high price. I don't know how I feel about that, but I am really looking forward to the book and I will tell you what I think about them once I actually read them. And I'm, I'm really excited to go through all of them. I don't know when I will, but 
<laughs> I'm really excited to read them. That's why I bought them, obviously, but sometimes I buy books and they stay on my bookshelf for quite a while. So I hope this won't be the case for the books I bought at the airport. Now I have a little special segment um, and this is basically two snacks I bought from Chinatown in a supermarket in Chinatown. Here's a clip. I said I kind of want to shoot my shot but writing some songs out on my guitar but I think it's time to call it off just turn 25 and I feel so lost and you said don't do it for them don't do it for me just do it because I know it's what you want to do. So that was a short clip, but you can also check my London vlog. I think I will publish that next time um, if I actually manage to edit it because there is a lot of footage. Not all of it is good um, because I am so embarrassed of filming in public. That's something I have to get over with, but let's try some snacks. So the first one I want to try is, well, let's try the, the salty one first. This is fresh cut lotus root chips. I got the sea salt um, version, so this is like salt and lime, I think. Um, there were a bunch of flavors. I I went for the white people version. Like, I didn't want it to be too spicy. Okay. I will try it if I can actually open this. Ooh, it smells so strong. Okay. They're so little. This feels like chips getting scammed. Do you see <laughs> how little they look? Okay. They look so much darker than I thought they would. This is kind of a curly one. Well, let's go for this one. Can you see that? It's so pretty. Focus, I think it is. Okay, so let's try a chip. They're less crunchy than I thought. I mean, they're good. There's nothing special about them. Mm. Let me try another one. Mm. These are a lot like regular chips. I feel like they're slightly less crunchy and they feel a bit burnt because look at this one. This is definitely shouldn't be this color. At least I don't think it should be. It's very dark in color. But they are good. I am glad I got the salt version because I don't know how it would have felt about the other spices. But now what does it say? Lotus root chips, sea salt lime flavor. I cannot taste the lime flavor. The sea salt is there. They are nice, but they're nothing special. Just regular chips, I'd say. So this was one of the snacks. Now let's try this one. I'm actually excited for these. These are delicious. I think they're Korean because it looks like it's written in Korean. Uh, they should be like sour candy. So this say candy parenthesis fruit. So yeah, let's try them out. Have I stopped knowing how to open things? Okay, this has a little... Oh, the smell is strong. It does smell like Haribo, but I guess old candy of this type smell like Haribo. Are they... They're shaped like little bones. Can you see that? It's like this. It's, it's nothing special. Uh, they are not sour at all. Uh, maybe that's on me. But I thought this little guy face, like, do you see the yellow face? I can't get it to focus, but there is a little face that made me think it would be sour. It's not sour. It's exactly like Haribo's. It's fine. It's, I don't know, just fruit jelly. There's nothing special about them at all. And I paid more because they're Asian. So that's on me. <laughs> they're good. It's just, again, just regular jellies. Both snacks are fine. I didn't want to go for something 
two out there. I also had two things that I would be taking them home and a lot of liquid things you can't buy because the airport will not let you pass through with them. But this was those two. They were fine. Just taste regular. It, there's nothing special about them. But anyway. These are the books that I got at the airport. I'm super excited to read all of them. Like, look at them. They're just, I just, I love them. So this was it for today. Um, thank you for watching. Please like this video, comment below if you read any of these books and what you think about them. And please consider subscribing. I also have a second channel where I play Sims games. So if you want, you can also check that out. I promise it's a lot of fun, even though Sometimes they're a bit of a disaster, but <laughs> they're very fun to make, at least. Um, so this was it, and I will see you next time, hopefully with a vlog from London, if I'm able to edit it. But we can only hope, so bye-bye. I just give the earth my soul Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls